Today I show you how to create rain and this puddle effect. Let's go. First add in a plane for the puddle and let's add in a second plane and move it up. This one is going to be our emitter. So let's select it and go to particle system and add a new one. If we go to the beginning and press play, these particles will drop down. Now we want to create our own water droplets, so let's just add in a sphere, move it to the side, scale it down. You can press command A to apply the scale. And let's call this one water drop. All right, let's get back into the particle system again and scroll down to render and change it to, from render as halo to a object. In instance object we can select the water drop we just created. As you can see the water drops are already here but um, they are not quite a good scale so let's put the scale to 1. Let's see how this looks. They are way too big so let's put it to 0.5 Mm, all right, maybe still a little bit too big. Let's put it to 0.3. You could just play around here and let's up the scale randomness to maybe 0.7 Something around this All right, looks good so far. Now let's go to the plane at the bottom uh, We don't want like the particles to fall all the way down here. So let's select this one and add in a collision modifier and all we have to do is click kill particles because if we restart the animation now, the particles won't fall through this plane. All right. Uh, to have actually waves on this thing, we need to add some subdivision. We can just press tab to go into edit mode, right click subdivide and on the number of cuts, let's change this to Maybe 50 for now. All right, let's get back into object mode again. And here we need a dynamic paint. So let's select dynamic paint and add a canvas. Perfect. To actually um, have the particles react with the plane down here, we have to go back to the upper plane also add a dynamic paint, but this time we don't want a canvas, we want a brush. So select brush and click on add. On the source, we want the particle system we created before. Let's just select this one. All that's left is right now to go to the plane at the bottom again. And on the canvas, we need to change the surface type to waves. Now, if we go to the beginning, we can already see the particles react with the uh, puddle at the bottom. Now let's right click and shade smooth. And now we can play with, play with the scale influence and the radius. Let's put this to 0.5 and this one also to 0.5. And we can already see it looks way better. We have not that high of, uh, of waves. We can change it to 0.3. And as you can already see, the, the radius is way smaller. You can play around with the influence, scale influence, whatever you think looks best for your scene. And let's get over to texturing the thing. For this example, I use cycles because cycle is more realistic. And in the end, it all comes together to your lighting system. So I usually use an HDRI. I have this add-on called Easy HDRI, where you can load in your, your HDRIs you have uh, on your PC. You can download them from Polyhaven. All these links are in the description. And let's say we just take uh, this HDRI, for example. All right. So first of all, to change the textures for the water drop, we have to select the main water drop over here. Go into material, add a new one. Let's call this water or water drop. Change the base color to kind of a blue thing. 
up the specular, lower the roughness, and up the transmission. The transmission is actually the key. Let's put this close to one. This already looks quite good. And we can turn down the alpha. This just means it's like more see-through. And yeah, this looks good for me. Um, we can actually do quite the same for the water texture. So let's change this one to water. Give this also some kind of blue color, not too much color in there. Up the specular, lower the roughness. And let's also add some transmission. The higher you go, like the more reflective it is. So just play around what you think looks best. Let's play the animation to see how it looks in, in action. Yeah, let's, let's go something about that. Maybe even le uh, leave it at one. Yeah, and if you want to have some more roughness in it, you can just up the roughness. Um, and under render settings and under film, I activate transparency to actually hide the HDRI to only focus on this texture. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, some final steps before you render this scene out. Go into the particle system and under cache, just hit bake. Um, I want my animation only to last until frame 150. Also do this at the top here, 150 and press bake. Perfect, and do the same for the water texture at the bottom, but this time in dynamic paint. So frame starts from 1 to 150, go under cache and go to start frame and press bake. Ah, you can press bake if you haven't saved the file. So let's save this file. After that, the bake should be available. So just hit bake and you're good to go. Now you can actually also scroll through the timeline and it should look uh, always the same. Exactly, and for rendering this out, you can also add in motion blur for realism. So let's go to the render tab, activate motion blur. Make sure the shutter is not too high because let's say you render this frame out. So this frame with the shutter speed of 0.5 looks super, super distorted. So the water droplets, um, just play around with the settings. I normally use 0.2. So if we do this with 0.2, you can actually still quite see the water drops, but it has some, some camera motion blur in there. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something today. I hope you can create super cool renders with it. And yeah, I hope I see you in the next tutorial. Bye guys.